key aspect of a young person's journey in life is to find out who they are. For some, this involves taking time out to explore the world and gain new experiences in unfamiliar places. This journey of the self is the foundation of Far Cry 3, an open world first person shooter that takes place in a remote island inhibited by dangerous wildlife, savage pirates and a mysterious tribe. In what is perhaps one of the most unhinged and thought-provoking first-person shooters of this generation, Far Cry 3 put players into the shoes of Jason Brody, a typical naive 20-something year old who must grow from a clumsy fool into a predatorial warrior in order to save his friends from human trafficking. Yet, if there was anything that players took away from their experience was the puzzling and menacing Voss. Fuck you! a deranged and psychopathic pirate who left both Jason and the player to ponder over an unnerving question. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? This rhetorical puzzle is the basis of this analysis. I must firstly stress, I'm not the only person to notice this connection so I don't claim ownership of the origin of this intriguing hypothesis. Is Jason Brody the predecessor of Voss? To elaborate, let me put it this way, throughout the game there are multiple confrontations that serve to highlight a metaphorical connection between Jason and Voss. In other words, the writing and visual style of Far Cry 3 is very symmetrical. In order to understand this connection, this analysis will be broken up into two parts. Firstly, it'll explore the psychology of Jason's journey that will include both the game's overarching theme of insanity and several instances such as the hallucination sequences. The second part will focus more specifically on the confrontations with the boss and the consistent use of doubles. As always, it's important to emphasize the subjective nature of this analysis as this is based on my own personal experience with the game and is by no means a reflection of what the developers intended. You have the right to take my life, but no, I will also take yours. Firstly, let's establish and examine the psychological tone of the game. Before beginning the actual single player campaign, it's worth taking into account the graphic style, most notably in the main menu. This prominently displays a key example of Far Cry 3's symmetrical style in what is known as the Rorschach test. The Rorschach test involves ink blots that form to create a symmetry in which the patient responds to what they see, hence it's a form of mental interpretation that's used to highlight psychological thought processes such as imagination and consciousness. Hermann Rorschach, the Swiss psychiatrist who came up with the method and was hugely influenced by Sigmund Freud, intended his inkblot method to indicate cognitive thought and personality variables that included the likes of perception, motivation, and emotion. To make it more understandable, it's basically a test that highlights how people think, and can be misused as a personality test. How is this relevant? Well, put it this way. Jason's personality is manipulated and changed throughout his time on the island. In a lot of ways, the island itself becomes an inkblot as it shapes Jason's identity. It tells him who he is. Cash for weapons. Oh. Uh, you want to save your brother, right? I've never shot anyone before. It's also worth noting how Jason's development as a warrior is symbolized. He gets a biliteral symmetrical tattoo on his arm. What makes the Rorschach test significant is that Far Cry 3 is primarily driven by cognition and personality. Every character has different psychological quirks and traits such as Buck, Sam, Earnhardt, Willis and most notably Voss. These people are all really distinct from each other excluding their psychopathic tendencies and this becomes relevant to the game's symmetrical motif. It's also worth taking into account the first hallucination in the game, 
The mushroom trip. You see huh? anything you fancy? I like the red ones myself. The purples will give you a lift on a grey day. You'll like where this will take you. In this sequence, the ecosystem begins to literally grow around Jason to symbolize that he is gradually being consumed and entrenched in the mentality of the island. The dialogue of Lisa talking about her job shows the distance that's created in which Jason is drifting apart from civilization. This reflects to a comment Voss makes regarding Jason falling from the freedom of the sky to the restriction of land. You see, the thing is, up there, you thought you had a chance. Way up in the fucking skies, you thought you had your finger on the pussy trigger. But hermano, down here, down here, In fact, a later hallucination sees Jason literally fall from the sky. To put it another way, Jason is constantly falling from great heights in the game, and when in actual gameplay, Jason is easily injured from falls. It strongly suggests that this is related to his mental decline. The distance that's echoed in the mushroom sequence is reinforced by the visual perception of Jason and the way the building constantly pulls away from him. The house is a symbol of man being dragged away by nature in the same way that identity is dragged away by insanity. In short, I wanted to highlight this because it reinforces and accentuates the Brody Voss connection and makes the symbols more understandable. Peekaboo motherfucker! Now before I go any further, take Voss's definition of insanity into account. Insanity is doing the exact same fucking thing over and over again, expecting shit. shit to change. That is crazy. This is perhaps the best way to encompass every sequence in the game. Voss repeats the same things constantly and is given multiple attempts to kill Jason only for them to continually backfire. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? This suggests that every encounter with Voss is purposely delaying narrative progression to help perpetuate the repetition supposedly found in insanity. In the opening introduction, Voss's first monologue establishes a physical connection with Jason by distancing both characters' perceptions of the world, which is later reflected in the aforementioned mushroom trip. This segregates the freedom and liberation found when the characters were united high up in their young rebellious spirit, but on the low foundation of the island, they are now in Voss's domain. Down here. Everything changes now that Jason and Voss are on equal land, and the persistent eye contact generates both a symmetrical presence and the foreshadowing of a long-term conflict. Voss is almost fearful for his position, and a subtle vulnerability becomes present to suggest that Voss only acts to protect his status that has ultimately become an instrument of his own insanity. Hoyt is the real boss on this foundation. You're all puppets, and we pull the strings! The system was designed to work that way! In fact, Voss refers to the ground as being his territory, calls Grant his bitch, and in one sequence where Jason sees a projection of Lisa, Voss pretends to be a film director. In many ways, Voss is continually role-playing. This vulnerability is significant as he is ultimately trying to mask a once innocent personality. Taking the white boy, I don't give a fuck about your family! It is by my grace that your head isn't impaled on the antenna of my car! Therefore, I would like it if you gave a fuck about Jason Brody! Okay, Hoyt. Okay. Alright. Fantastic! Eventually, Jason shadows his own innocence to gain the status of a warrior. So this opening foreshadows Jason's later character development. 
In other words, Voss was once like Jason, and Jason will eventually be like Voss. Hey Jason, you miss me? On a side note, relating to the topic of masking identity, poker is a prominent pastime found on the island. It essentially becomes a theme itself, as one of the techniques of poker is to hide your emotional traits to fool your opponents, in what is known as the poker face. Also, take the line of dialogue from the cliff sequence as an example of vulnerability. I'm sorry, I don't like the way you are looking at me, okay? You have a fucking problem in your head, do you think I'm bullshitting you, do you think I'm lying? Fuck you, okay? Fuck! You. This shows not only heavy paranoia, but also a constant pressure to maintain a certain status. He speaks rhetorically to Jason and as a result, it makes it seem as though he's just talking to himself. He's almost identical to Travis Bickle's character in Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver. You talking to me? Well, who the hell else are you talking to? Talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? Interestingly, water also plays on the use of doubles. For example, when Jason falls off the cliff, the splash of water resembles the Rorschach test. Water is used in many ways to stylize the hallucination sequences, and in my logic, water creates a reflection, a reflection is like a mirror, and a mirror duplicates the image of an individual looking into it. It creates a symmetry. You could even go deeper and relate water to the symmetrical theory by suggesting the scientific fact that water is a symmetrical molecule, but I digress. Furthermore, pay close attention to Voss's dialogue as he constantly doubles his sentences. I'm gonna drive a bullet through my sister's skull, like I did your brother Grant. Them or me! Me or them! You want me to slice you open like I did your friend? You are me, and I am you. Again, this conveys the symmetrical elements of the story as it reinforces a sense of duplication generating from Voss and Jason. The animation of the character also infers to the notion that Voss is practically talking to himself as he walks in a loop. In some cases, it doesn't matter if he's talking to himself or Jason, it all has the same effect. This suggests that Voss already sees himself within Jason. You are angry, Jason. You are angry. Okay, I get that. I get it. I mean, without family, who the fuck are we? A final point of consideration in Voss's dialogue are the sexually inferred lines. Way up in the fucking skies, you thought you had your finger on the pussy trigger. I'm the one with the fucking dick! California boy's got a hard on. Jungle fever. These lines arguably reflect the ending where Citra and the warrior are supposed to rear a child together. In the narrative, it was once suggested by Citra that Voss was supposed to be that warrior, and so the knowledge of this implied incest has become embedded within his mind thus an element of his insanity. If Jason decides to take on the role of the warrior, then it leads to his ultimate execution. In reality, this makes sense considering that Citra wanted to kill Voss from the beginning, and when realizing that Jason is turning into Voss, Citra kills Jason to reflect his transformation. Die, a warrior. Now let's analyze the final fight between Voss and Jason with the thematical elements of the dialogue and graphical representation of the Rorschach test taken into account. To begin, it's open to interpretation as to whether Voss actually stabs Jason or not. Yet what's apparent is that Jason isn't actually wounded so it's less likely that he's hallucinating and more likely that he immerses himself back into his insanity. In other words, 
every major encounter Jason has results in the setting becoming more abstract and enclosed. In this respect, these sequences are visual representations of Jason's insane transformation, as they disengage him from his surroundings and confine him to his vocal target. What's most fascinating about this sequence is how it questions Jason's actions. The first image is Jason putting a gun to his head, as an image of Voss flashes in between. This signifies Jason ending his own identity to start anew as Voss. The line, what kind of man are you, infers to Jason's indecisive internal struggle. Even before the island, Jason isn't sure who he wants to be, and now that he's being presented with a choice, the images essentially force him to finally make a decision. Following this, Voss and Citra intercut while dancing around a pole, which reflects the nightclub that Jason and his friends were at, especially taking into account that the same nightclub music is played at the beginning of the mission. The image both ironically and metaphorically highlights Jason's new identity as Voss, as it's put into the context of Jason's previous social life. Again, the indecisiveness is prominently displayed as the sequence jumps from Jason turning into Voss and Jason already being Voss. In other words, is it possible that the island exposed Jason's insanity? His insanity being personified as Voss. Pull the trigger. Come on, motherfucker. Pull the trigger! The upside down image of Jason and Voss having intercourse with Citra both foreshadows and manipulates Jason into choosing to stay on the island. Thus, the theme of manipulation and deception are displayed. The image also confirms the implied incest of Citra and Voss when related back to the destiny of the warrior and Voss's sexual references. The constant eyes in the monitors reinforce the sense of paranoia and feeling of being watched. Eye contact is a significant feature of the game's design as characters never take their eyes off Jason. Interestingly, when Jason finally has the opportunity to pull the trigger and with Voss continually encouraging him, Jason hesitates before he shoots. It draws the illusion that maybe Jason didn't really want to kill Voss. Perhaps, Jason is thankful to Voss for helping him realize his potential identity. This also begs the question as to whether Voss even wanted to kill Jason. Voss clearly saw something in Jason, and evidently, it's possible that Voss wanted Jason to win, thus redeeming him from his current position in life. To build on this, the name Voss derives from Servos, the Dutch form of the Latin name Servatius, which again derives from Servatus, which means saved, redeemed. Voss's last words are biblical. He asks to be crucified. He asks to be reborn. Reborn as... Jason. The scene ends by consolidating every theme of the game. Jason and Voss lie symmetrically next to each other, as Voss gives Jason eye contact one last time before their connection finally comes to an end. In conclusion, the mind is a powerful human device. It decides, it processes, it adapts, it controls, and it changes. There is something truly compelling about Far Cry 3, and Jason's journey into the world of insanity is undeniably unique in its interpretation of character motivation. Jason is a character that both young people and older can relate to. His self-discovery is part of growing up, and every young person eventually finds themselves in a position where they must decide who they really are. Defining our identity is what makes us unique, and Jason represents a growing of innocence. Amongst the chaotic and exhilarating action is a game with profoundness and heart. Jason gives up his immaturity to grow into something more. Looking at it from any perspective, there is sympathy to be had not only for Jason's agonizing situation, but for Voss. Voss is ultimately a tortured soul. He has given up his sanity and humanity to become part of a corrupt and decaying island. 
He's simply a pawn who's being controlled and manipulated by Hoyt, and as a result, he's no more significant than Jason. In a lot of ways, Voss is not the villain, and this is perhaps why his story comes to an end in the second act. Maybe Voss felt the same deception and manipulation from Hoyt as did Jason from Citra. Voss was perhaps too weak to kill Hoyt himself and wanted to internalize himself within Jason to do it for him. Ultimately, Voss wanted to pass on his non-existent throne to someone that would remind him of himself. That was Jason Brody.